Good day, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh, and we are going to do kinetics today. All right, so kinetics. We're going to do initial rates with kinetics, in fact. Kinetics is fabulous. We love kinetics. The reason why we love kinetics so much is that it's part of what describes the energetics of a reaction. And kinetics is more of the viewpoint as the re reaction goes along. So imagine that you were taking Polaroid pictures. I know that's really, really archaic. It would be the equivalent of holding down the button on your iPhone to get a whole bunch of pictures at once. Okay, so pictures uh, that are right after each other, only separated by milliseconds or so. That's kind of the idea of what happens with kinetics. As the reaction progresses, we can take a picture of that reaction at any time that it is progressing. Okay, not just at the beginning or the end, which we now know is actually not an end, it's really usually equilibrium. That's more of a th thermodynamics point of view to do the beginning and the end. Kinetics is as you go along, which is fabulous. Okay, so let's say we had a problem like this. This is um, a reaction, this is an organic reaction. It's basically an SN2 reaction, which is uh, no, actually, it would be an SN2 reaction. I lied, it'd be an SN1 reaction. Um, and you'll know more about that later as to why that happens. But in this particular case, what we're seeing is we're seeing an exchange of the Br and the OH, right? So OH is substituting itself into this carbon chain where Br was before. And we'll learn a lot, whole lot more about SN1 reactions as to whether what that means, what the one means, what SN means. Just as a hint, it's nucleophilic substitution. But we'll get there. No worries. If you have the joy and bliss of going on to organic chemistry, this is what we'll be thinking about. But at the moment, we really want to put our focus towards this big chart of information. That big chart of information is one that I got off of a previous exam. Woohoo! And, in fact, is um, exactly what you would get if you were doing an initial rates experiment. So, if you're doing an initial rates experiment, basically what you do is you figure out what the concentration of each of the reactants is at the beginning of the experiment. So that's what these zeros mean, right at the beginning, before time has really started to let that experiment go. Essentially what we're saying here is that time equals zero when you have an initial rates experiment. Ooh. These markers don't want to open for me. T equals zero for initial rates. And that's what this zero means, right? So I'm taking the concentration of the reactants right at T equals zero, and then I'm getting the rate right as the reaction begins. Okay, so T essentially equals zero for the whole thing. And what we're looking for is we're looking for where the question mark is. Mm, what is the rate? What can I predict is the rate for the fourth experiment? So the first experiment, you look across, you got the initial concentrations, you got this rate. That's what we're looking at. And you have to have multiple experiments to make this happen. So whenever you see a chart like this, you're going to be doing an initial rates kinetics calculation. To be able to find out what that last initial rate is, we actually have to find the rate law. And the rate law is rate, in general form, is rate times K times reactant 1, whatever that is. In this case, our reactants are given to us. Times the second reactant, if you have one. In this case, again, it was given to us. And both of these are raised to a power. Now, what are M and N? M and N are what we call reaction orders. And reaction orders are not the same as the coefficients, unless you know that this reaction only happens in one step, and that whatever that step is, you know what the coefficients are. Or you could also have a reaction that happens in multiple steps, but the reaction orders would only be the coefficients in front of these reactants in the slowest step. 
So it's a difference. You usually don't have this information. You usually have the overall reaction, and that's exactly what you have here. You don't know the steps of this reaction. I could tell you about them. We will in organic chemistry, but we're not going to at the moment. So in terms of this, we need to find the reaction orders a different way. They are not the same as the coefficient, the coefficients the vast majority of the time. So what do we need to do instead? What we need to do is we need to do a comparison of multiple experiments using different numbers. Okay. That's what the reaction orders are. We're going to find reaction orders from this kind of table. K is what we call the rate constant. Little k is the rate constant. The rate constant is a constant. It only changes at different temperatures. So usually when we're finding k, we're varying the temperature and trying to figure out what, uh, well, no, actually. When we're finding k, we're doing it at one temperature. And we can also find it from a chart like this. When we're doing something with different temperatures in K, we're usually finding actually an activation energy. And we'll talk about that in some future video. OK. But at the moment, what we need is we need the rate constant. OK. So in terms of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare two experiments. And what I would like to do is I would like to use this general idea for two different experiments. But I would like to hold, since K is a constant, I could say that that's the same for all of these experiments. And I'm trying to find M or N. So let's find M first. To find M, you want to vary this reactant, but you want to hold the other one constant. You don't want that to vary, because you want it to basically cancel out. So I'm going to pick experiments 1 and 2 to find M, because that's where OH minus is constant. And I have all of the information I need. Okay. So essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rate of experiment 2 is equal to K times my reactant here. from experiment 2 to the m power and OH minus to the n power from experiment 2. And I'm going to divide that by the rate of experiment 1 is equal to k times same deal, reactant 1 to the m power from experiment 1 times OH minus to the n power from experiment 1. And lo and behold, look what happens, folks. The Ks we know cancel out, because it's a constant. They're at the same temperature. OH minus is the same number both times. So the same number divided by the same number is 1. So we can cancel those out. So what I could do is I could rearrange this and say that the rate of 2 is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, rate of 2 over the rate of 1, this ratio is going to be equal to the value of the concentration of carbon tetra, oh no, let's see, what would we call this maybe? Uh, yeah, I would maybe say carbon tetrabromine, bromide, something like that, um, just to make it easier on ourselves. Um, you could literally name it if you wanted to. Um, the official name of this would be, you label, labeled it 1 and 2, 1 uh, bromo, 1, 1 dimethyl ethane, but that seems like a lot. Okay, and then I have, that's from this reactant from 2 over this reactant from 1. And since both of these are to the m power, let's just make the overall thing to the m power. Awesome. That makes life a lot easier, right? So let's actually calculate that out somewhere on this board, <laughs> which this is the sad part about glass. Sometimes you run out of room. OK, let's do, uh, let's do it. Uh, let's do it up here. Then we'll erase. OK, so rate from 2, the rate from 2 is, maybe I'll do it right here, 2.0 times 10 to the 
negative third, right? Over rate of 1, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative third, which is equal to the concentration of this reactant from 2, 0.2, and the one from 1, over 0.1, to the m power. So looking at this, right, you're going to see that this is equal to 2. 2.0 times 10 to the negative third divided by 1.0 times 10 to the negative third is 2. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.1 is 2 to the m power. So you're asking yourself, what number do I have to bring 2 to the power of in order to get 2? And the answer is 1. 2 to the first power is equal to 2. So we know that m here is not equal to m, it's equal to 1. All right, let's erase all of this, and let's find n. We're going to do the exact same thing, but in the converse. All right. So in other words, this time around, we're going to hold my carbon tetrabromide constant, and I'm going to vary hydroxide. That's what I'm going to do. And it's going to be fabulous. And then we're going to find K, and then we're going to be able to find what this final rate is. All right. So, kinetics in all of its glory. This is just one part, by the way, of kinetics. Kinetics also has several other pieces that are fabulous, including energy diagrams, which are perhaps the most fabulous, at least in, my, in terms of my organic self. That's the most fabulous. All right, let's talk about to find N. To find N, right, we need to hold this one constant while we vary this one. So in other words, I need to find two experiments where this guy is constant. And that's true in one and three. One and three, I have a constant. So let's do uh, three over one. Rate of three. And I'm going to shorten this up a little bit. Rate of three over rate of one is equal to k over k, which we knew canceled out. We know that these are the same number. They cancel out. So it's just going to be OH minus of 3 over OH minus of 1 to the power of n. That works out nice. All right, so let's do that. What's the rate of 3? 1.0 times 10 to the negative third over 1.0. That's from 1 times 10 to the negative third is equal to the concentration of OH uh, in 3, which is 0.2. Concentration of OH in 1 is 0.1 to the power of N. OK. So in this case, we're dividing the same number by the same number. That's 1. 0.2 divided by 0.1 is 2 to the N. All right. Now. What number do you have to bring 2 to to get 1? Well, the answer is 0, right? Any number to the 0 power gives you 1. However, the interesting thing here is that what if you didn't see that? What if you were like, <laughs> I have no idea? Then what you would have done is you would have taken the natural log of both sides, or the log base 10. It doesn't matter. That's what log was actually made for is if you take the log of both sides, the log was made to, if you had a variable as a power that you couldn't solve for, that would have allowed you to actually solve for it. So here what I would do if I had the natural log of 1 equals the natural log of 2 to the n, then the n can actually come in front of the natural log of 2. That's what natural log does for you. And so then I could have done the natural log of 1 divided by the natural log of 2 is equal to n. And I could have found out that that's still 0. Okay? If it's 0, that's interesting, because basically what that means 
is that OH minus concentration doesn't matter at all in this reaction. It just matters what the concentration of this reactant is. So my rate at the moment is K times CH3, 3, CBr to the first power. That's my rate law at the moment. Okay, if I want to find K, then I simply plug in, I solve for K, right? K is equal to the rate over the concentration of this reactant. And I can plug in any of these experiments to find that. Let's say we're going to plug in experiment two, just because it's kind of fun and interesting, right? So the rate here for experiment two is two, and I could choose one or three just as easily, 2.0 times 10 to the negative third divided by 0.2. So K, this is gonna be one, uh, and you're gonna divide uh, basically one, yeah, I mean, you could plug it in if you're feeling, but it should be one times 10 to the negative second, right? Yeah, or 0.01. Okay, and since this is, by the way, moles per liter second, and this is moles per liter, this becomes inverse seconds, which is exactly what the um, rate constant should be in if you have a first order equation. Okay, I'll tell you how I got a first order equation in a minute here. Actually, I'm going to tell you right now. Since this is our rate, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. Since this is our rate right here, then what's happening here is that when you are finding the overall reaction order, that's what we say the order of the equation is, what you do is you add n plus n or whatever else you got. And since it was 1 plus 0, we would call this a first order equation because the overall reaction order is equal to 1. Which makes sense, because now you know why this is SN1. The 1 talks about the fact that it's first order. Fabulous, huh? Woo! OK, so now, what do I have as my equation? What I have as my equation is I have, let's rewrite this. for a moment here. And I'm going to erase everything for a minute, just so that I have some room on my board to write. All right. OK, so now that I have this, what I know is I know essentially that it doesn't matter how much OH I have in there. It just matters how much I have of the carbon chain, the alkyl halide. And what we would call this in organic chemistry is we would call this a tertiary alkyl halide. And the reason why we would call that is because the carbon that's directly bonded to the bromine in this substituent is bonded to three other carbons. So that's why it's a tertiary alkyl halide. OK, so my rate law at the moment is equal to 0 0.01 inverse seconds, that's k, times this guy, this tertiary alkyl halide, to the first power. That's my rate law. And that is awesome. However, that's not what was asked. What was asked was to find the rate of this final moment. So all that I have to do now is if I want to find the rate of 4, all that I have to do is plug in 0 0.01 inverse seconds times whatever the value of this is in 4, which is 0.3 moles per liter. And my rate for 4 is going to be equal to 0 0.01 times 0 0.3, which is 0 0.003 moles per liter second, 
Or if you wanted to write that differently, you could, but I bet you it'd be 3.30, right? 3.0 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter second. And that's how you solve that problem. Kinetics at its best with a little bit of organic integrated. Fabulous. Until I see you next time, I bid you adieu.